Hey friends, welcome back to another video. Today is going to be super fun. I'm starting to fill the pages of my Etcher sketchbook and this will be the first page. I chose this really fun photo of a fashion model in a red hat and sunglasses. So it is a portrait, but most of the features are covered up by all of the floppy hat and the glasses. So it should be pretty simple to draw and just basic portrait colors. If you're just dipping your toes into portraits, this will be a great one to get started with. So let me show you the supplies I have today. I'll be using my Etcher sketchbook. You can see I already hand painted the cover. There is a video about how I did that if you're interested because it is a canvas fabric cover. It requires some special prep if you want to use watercolor on it. And right here on the very first page, I've already applied some tape around the edges. This is just some washi tape just so I have pretty borders and can keep track of where my composition is. So to start out, it's helpful to decide where you want your composition to be, the placement of everything, and you can even do your drawing ahead of time and then transfer it to your journal. However, I really like the spontaneity and the challenge of trying to get the sketch down on the first pass. Probably a glutton for punishment, but let's go for it. <laughs> For the sketch, I like to look at the negative space, for example, here between the hat and the corner of the page. And I tried to design my reference photo and composition so they're the same aspect ratio. That makes it a lot easier to judge the distances between edges of things. And then from there, once I have the wide brim of the hat drawn on, I can sketch the basic shape of the head. Try to measure distances between the edge of your paper and the edge of the ear and from one ear to the side of the cheek and look at the different angles. For example, I had to adjust the brim of the hat there, erase it and start over again because the corner of the mouth was too far away from the hat. So those are little distances you're going to be looking at when you do the sketch. Once you have the rough shapes in, then you can go in with bolder marks and from there you can really tighten up your drawing and make sure that everything is accurate. I do try to sketch lightly generally. I sketched a little darker on this one so you guys could see all of my marks a little bit better. But for the most part, when I do a watercolor painting, I want to do my pencil sketches really lightly, especially in areas that are lighter in value, like the brim of the hat and the skin itself. They're very, very light. So just be careful that you're not pressing too hard. Pressing too hard can also leave imprints in your paper where the paint can puddle and pool, so just watch out for that. Here I'm sketching the hair, just studying my reference photo really closely and trying to capture the general direction and movement and flow of the hair. And I want to smooth out the neck and make it just a little skinnier. I made it too wide my initial sketch. Then the last thing I generally sketch are the facial features. I want to make sure they're located in the right place. And again, trying not to press too hard with my pencil, I do indicate the shadow underneath the brim of the hat, the cheekbone, and the collarbone. All right, so we're going to start with wet and wet. Even though this is hot pressed paper, wet and wet can still work really beautifully, especially if you work in small sections. So I'm beginning with the background with some nice light washes of Hansa yellow light. And I do this on the top portion as well. I don't want to go too dark or bold with the background, it's very muted. Now to create a nice earthy green, I mix ultramarine blue and a warm yellow. This is Gamboge Nova. And this little sliver of background just above her hat and below, I'm painting those just a little bit darker with some natural looking greens. Next for the hat, I'm going to start with wet and wet again, carefully painting with clean water but avoiding the white brim of the hat. I'm just painting in the area that's going to be red. For my red, I'm choosing a warm red. This is Scarlet Lake by Holbein, but you could also use a cadmium red light or something like that. And you can see when you wet the paper first, your paint will disperse so beautifully and evenly across the surface of the paper. My brush, by the way, is a Traquel size 6 synthetic round brush. It's really a nice size for a smaller painting like this. And then I'm taking a half inch flat brush, which has been dipped in the water with most of the water removed, and gently swiping across the hat to help reveal some of the texture of the weave in the hat. This can also be done in several layers and then you can add color back in using your round brush again. So here I'm boosting the color one more time with a second layer of Scarlet Lake and then reintroducing some of the red as it begins to dry. Your marks are going to stay put more once the paper begins to dry. Now for my initial skin tone, I'm mixing transparent orange, Hansa Yellow Light, and a tiny bit of Quinacridone Rose. With that pre-mixed, I go ahead and wet the paper everywhere inside of the skin except for the lips and the eyes and the hair. I'm painting the entire section in with clean water. Once again, wet and wet is going to be your best friend for the softest dispersion of paint. So with a very, very light tinted wash of my skin tone, I'm going over the entire head and neck and shoulders, and I'm leaving a little bit of the left side of her neck completely the pure white of the paper. This is helping it really feel like it's in the light. And as it's beginning to dry, you don't want it to dry too much before you miss out on the opportunity to do some wet and wet by increasing the darkness of her cheeks and boosting the shadow tone underneath the hat. 
For this, I'm just mixing a darker version of my same skin tone with transparent orange, a little bit of yellow. I'm also introducing a little bit of burnt sienna in and painting a first layer for the hair that's overlapping her mouth. I increase the red underneath that shadow tone and then I'm beginning the sunglasses. This is wet on dry. I didn't pre-wet the paper here. I'm just taking Scarlet Lake and painting that inside of the sunglass. And then to increase the depth of the shadow, I'm introducing indigo to the mix, adding in some more pure Scarlet Lake. And while that's still wet, I'm gonna rework the entire area by taking my damp brush and blending the two colors seamlessly together. This will help prevent any blooms or unevenness in drying time in that space. I'm also darkening the shadow underneath the sunglasses using burnt sienna and right underneath the ear. Now if this video is moving too fast for you, I wanted to let you know that the full length real time version of this tutorial is available through my watercolor mastery membership. The monthly membership includes over 100 narrated watercolor tutorials, including a comprehensive 30-day course just for beginners. There are lessons on painting skin tones and fur texture and tons of fun painting projects for all levels. Many of the tutorials include drawing instruction, but they each come with a downloadable reference photo, traceable line drawing, and a complete list of supplies. I'll leave a link in the description below so you guys can check that out. All right, let's get back to the video. With that indigo mixture, I've also mixed in a little bit of red with it, so it's almost this dark purple. I'm beginning to paint some shadow tones in the hair. My main color for the hair is transparent brown oxide. This is a Daniel Smith color. And you can see there are wonderful different values and shades you can create with just this single tone. And it's almost the perfect color to match the reference photo. Try to leave little gaps in your brush strokes indicating some of the highlights in the hair. And while that's drying, I'm going onto the lips, once again using my Scarlet Lake, pretty much painting them in solid, except for several tiny little highlights where the lipstick looks really shiny. With the lips in, it's really beginning to look like a portrait. Next, I take some more shadow tones. This is a mixture of indigo and transparent brown oxide to create black, and I'm painting the dark shadow shapes all within the hair. You wanna use a nice delicate feathering motion of your brush for this, and make sure that you're including some mid-tones when you're painting hair. It should never just be a highlight and a dark. You wanna have a nice variety of values within the hair so that it looks more realistic. For the facial features like the nostrils and mouth, just use a nice dark color with a little bit of red in it so that it's a warm dark rather than cool. And then if you do want to introduce some cool pops of color, you can use a nice blue like core phthalo blue, that's what I'm using here, but a very light tinted wash. Don't go too dark with these. And I'm using that color to just go over some of the skin, the background, and the brim of the hat. Now I wanted to increase the redness of her cheek one more time, so this is best done with wet and wet. Pre-wet the paper first and then drop in as much color as you'd like and softly blend it out. And as a final detail, I'm adding some more red streaks to that woven texture in the hat. So that it looks nice and smooth, I'm just taking a damp brush and going over those brush strokes, helping it appear more blended and soft. One more layer in the background and then you can remove the tape. And because it's hot pressed paper, gotta be so gentle, mine's tearing just a little bit. There we go. There is our finished fashion model with her elegant droopy hat. This one was super fun to paint for you guys. Let me know in the comments what you think if you'd like to see more subject matter like this. As I said, if you're just getting into portraits, this is a great one to start with. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.